Yan, hello, hello mga kameta, kamusta kayo dyan? Finally, nakatulog tayo na konti, nakikita niyo sa ating puffy eyes. Eto na, eto na. Grabe, tignan mo. Ngayon palang mag uh, sa sunrise dito. 10am na almost. At uh, parang ngayon lang mag sa sunrise dito. Grabe yung uh, schedule natin dito. Oh. Uh, thank you Lord, uh, medyo safe tayo nakapunta dun sa isang iceberg area. Yung Russell Iceberg, really fantastic place. I really suggest people to go there. And just as a test, no, uh, nagpalit tayo ng sapatos actually. Sabi ko, gamitin ko yung isang sapatos. So, ito, 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 yung mga uh, interesado dyan. Go for, ano, uh, Cloud Monster version ng, ano, um, ng on shoes. Makahanap, especially kung makahanap kayo ng cell edition, nakahanap ako ng cell edition nun. So, sobrang sulit yung Cloud Monster kasi sobrang lalim yung kanyang mga, ano, eh dun sa ilalim niya. So, ang dami niyang mga snow na mga kuha. So, in, even if hindi ako gumamit ng uh, icebreaker or snow piercer, uh, sapat na sapat yung shoes na yan. So, very very good shoes. So, I suggest go for Cloud Monster on. Yun po yung ginamit natin kahapon. Especially kung nakahanap po kayo ng... Huwag uh, na yung mga, ano, yung mga usual stuff. Mga Adidas, Nike, ganun. Go for Cloud Monster. Very good. Yung Cloud Monster version ng on, ha? Hindi yung mga normal. Kasi yung iba may normal silang on na medyo flat version. Hindi siya masyadong maganda daw dun sa Salomon na lang mas maganda daw. Uh, but yung Cloud Monster, sobrang lalim. So pag kanya nang pagtapak mo ng snow, you can hear talaga the crunch. So go for it. Anyway, uh, syempre hindi naman tayo travel vlogger per se. But I'm looking at uh, making a number of videos sana based dito sa mga uh, ibang travels natin. Especially, you know, for, as, a, as a form of encouragement to dun sa mga ibang kababayan natin na gusto, you know, to go to the frontiers of the world. At yung mga tao na gusto makita ng ano, no? Yung mga uh, people who want to see uh, the, 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 you know, kasi hindi natin alam gano'ng katatagal to eh. Uh, maybe in 50 years, 100 years, wala na yung mga ibang icebergs dito. So, Greenland has the largest iceberg uh, the ice sheet overall no in the, in the world outside Antarctica and biggest in the northern hemisphere so when you get talaga yung remnants ng ice age and deep into the horizon no you peer deep into the horizon it's like an abyss of frozen dunes no so sobrang magical yan so yun ang suggest ko sa inyo so make sure if you come here you use uh ice breakers meron kayong dala na snow piercer ice breakers whatever you want to call it so, very important yan. Pero certain parts na hindi masyadong icy and snowy, Cloud Monster on addition should do the trick. Right? Uh, Tingnas ko yan talaga ka kahapon. It worked very, very well. So, yung Cloud Monster edition, kasi nga yung mga flat edition, hindi ganun kaganda yata dito sa mga snow. It has to be that taller Cloud Monster edition naman. Anyway, yun yung suggestion ko dun sa mga gusto mag uh, uh, climb climb ng intense. Um, now, as you know, mga kameta, of course, I would be happy to post uh, nice pictures and all, but as you know, uh, well, you know, our heart goes to, to all of the people who are suffering right now uh, in the Middle East. No, ako, sabi ko, I don't care what's your color, your creed, or country when, you know, thousands of children are dying, whether it's on this side of the border, on that side of the border, that's, that's something that's going to really really hurt us, but I just felt it's not the right time to post yung mga ibang pictures na. And I tried to make, um, you know, to make sure now we, we get the best pictures possible. But siguro medyo later pa natin yung post onti onte Because I, I'm just not in the state of mind, no? Actually, last year nasa Europe din tayo, back to back to back. Ang dami ko muna hindi na-post ng picture kasi nangyari yung gira sa Ukraine, di ba? So parang you feel it's it's a bit insensitive, no? To to post about, you know, mga glamour shot feels uh when you know so much suffering and pain is happening especially when children and women are affected or elderly affected ibang usapan yan eh um ibang usapan yan now going back to the philippines obviously hindi ako nakapag photo medyo malayo ata yung ano eh yung voting uh boots i think nandun pa sa nook sa kabila uh, at best if not all the way back in copenhagen so unfortunately i was not able to vote so here we have uh, barangay elections now, barangay elections are interesting because, well, in many ways, ito yung microcosm na ating politika. It gives us idea about the fundamentals of Philippine politics. It's give, it gives us ideas about the fundamental problems of the Philippine politics. So, base sa mga reports na nakita ko kanina, mga ilan po namatay. So, a report that came out a few hours earlier said at least tatlo po ang namatay uh, related dun sa barangay elections sa uh, 
uh, na nagaganap dyan sa Pilipinas. So, you know, doon pala nakikita mo na this is a microcosm of Philippine politics. Guns, goons, and gold, no? And I wonder, you know, if there are going to be some comprehensive reports about corruption, etc. Tsaka yung ano, di ba, yung mga sanggunian kapataan, SK elections pa, or kahit sa barangay elections level, doon pala nakikita natin na And doon na yung ugat ng problema eh. Yung mga sinasabi na batang-bata pa lang, trapo na. Or barangay level pa lang, parang malapresidente na yung, ano, di ba? Yung, yung, uh, yung kilos, di ba? Yung mga the moves, di ba? At alam natin, uh, million-million dolyar na ngayon ang ginagastos pag tumatakbo na sa barangay election sa ibang lugar. No? So, this is insane. So, this, this tells you, uh, this tells you that there's something fundamentally wrong talaga sa ating demokrasya. Because barangays, are something unique to the Philippines. Barangays are something unique because if you look at the Philippines prior to the arrival of European colonizers, whether it's the Spanish, whether it's the Americans, or whether it's the Japanese at some point, uh, also colonizers, actually, we had political entities, political institutions and polities, but relatively small sides. And barangay, of course, comes from the word balangay, and it can go back to yung story ng mga bangka na ginagamit ng ating ancestors roaming through seas and oceans. No? So a lot of us have DNAs that can be traced all the way to Madagascar. So our ancestor crossed the Indian Ocean all the way to places like the Philippines. So ito po yung mga roots natin, no? yung DNA roots natin. No? Yung Malayan roots po natin can be traced all the way back to Madagascar. So for some of you who may have met people from Madagascar, I have a friend from Madagascar who's actually uh, French, Paris-based. Uh, yeah, mukhang, mukhang Indonesian. Pwede mukhang Pinoy, di ba? So, you know, you look at it, our ancestors went through oceans. You know, and some of them went all the way to Hawaii and all the way to the other side of the Pacific near Chile, right? So, so we have amazing ancestors. When, so when China says that, oh, thousands of years ago, I don't know, Admiral Zhang He was not even a Chinese. It was a Muslim, Central Asian Persian person. And when they say, oh, our ancestors roamed these areas, blah, blah, blah. Uh, excuse me. No, our ancestors roamed the entire Indian and Pacific Oceans for thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of years. Kaya nga yung mga uh, people similar to our DNA, Malayan race, can be found all the way to actually here, no? <laughs> Or, uh, you know, the all the way here, yung mga, you can say perhaps mga Inuits related, not sa Malayan race, but sa Asiatic races. And all the way also, also of course, to, to the Pacific Islands, to Guam. So we can have a long conversation about it. I really suggest you guys read the book, um, The Dawn of Everything. It's a pretty long book, a thousand page book, but it tells you a lot about archaeological and anthropological discoveries of the late, no? Uh, which helps you to appreciate things and put things into context. Now, meron akong isang interview, eh, habol ko yung, again, ah, yung issue ng Philippine votes sa United Nations, at saka yung approach natin sa Middle East. But before going there, speaking of barangay, sabi ko nga, the best way to appreciate Tatay Digong's foreign policy is barangay geopolitics, no? Yung kanyang pag-intindi sa nuances and sophistication of foreign policy ay ka-level ng isang uh, barangay official na wala pang napuntaan masyado around the world. Uh, may rami akong kilala na barangay chairman na may mas maraming alam kay Tatay Digong, no? At mas sophisticated at may maraming napuntaan sa mundo. Pero yung kay Tatay talaga ito yung pang barangay level lang. And speaking of how pang barangay yung kanyang politika was this, Yes, he was correct to raise questions about the Philippines' dependence on the U.S. Pero nag-jump siya kaagad sa, uh, sa China. At tignan natin, ano nangyari sa mga proyekto ni Tatay Digong nung panahon niya. So, six years. Six years si Digong sa power. He was promised $24 billion of investments by China. He was promised multiple high-tech modern railways by China, including one in Mindanao. and two others in Luzon area. We're talking about billions of dollars and wala, nada, zilch, nilch, nothing. <laughs> nothing happened. Nothing happened. Kaya nga sabi ko, mali yung mga kaibigan natin na iba na nagsasabi, debt trap. Ang debt trap po yung mangyari kung may nangyari investment. Sa atin, wala po nangyari. Pledge trap po yung nangyari. Pledge trap. Purong pangako lang, purong pledge lang. Walang nangyari sa, sa parte ng China, pero si Tatay Digong ay purong ganyan-ganyan sa China. So, ito po, no, kanina si Transportation Secretary Bautista, no, sabi niya, ito mga projects estimated at $4.9 billion dollars ay officially wala na. Sabi niya, we have three projects that won't be funded by the Chinese government anymore. We can wait forever and it seems like China isn't that interested anymore. So, wala na. 
At, accordingly, the Marco Jr. administration is looking for better deals proposed from Japan, Korea, Australia, or from the United States or the European Union, which also have a lot of experience with these high-tech infrastructure projects, and they provide interest rates that are way better than China. In China, interest rates are 3%, 4% plus. Japan, interest rates nila mga point something, right? Under 1%, no? So, much better terms. And of course, pagdating sa Japan, ang ganda ng quality. So, masalamat kay Aquino, salamat kay Digong, at salamat kay BBM na at least yung subway project natin na led by Japan ay tuloy-tuloy na at hopefully within two years, some of the new stations will open up. So, yung mga social dyan na mga taga BGC, Makati, baka makikita niyo yung mga first stations na yan. And hopefully, before the end of this decade, kompleto na yung subway made by Japan. I look forward to more railways in the Philippines made by Japan since mukhang wala nangyari dito sa China yan. In fact, ayon sa Philippine uh, Senate, no? Ayon sa Philippine Senate, hindi lang itong tatlong railway projects ay, ay medyo malala uh, dahil sa sobrang palpak ni tatay mag-negotiate na mga international deals. Yan kasi, amateur nga, yabang-yabang. That's what happens when you have iron wheel and yabang attached to little knowledge. It's a very, very bad combination, alright? So, dito ha, ayon kay Sherwin Gachalayan, Sir, Senator Sherwin Gachalayan, aside from dito sa mga palpak na China project na hindi natuloy, six other projects under ODA have also been delayed. Sabi ni Sherwin Gachalayan, we convene an overnight oversight on ODA, so I know that many of the ODA funded projects are delayed due to the implementation of the right of way and bidding. Consider the economics and if the benefit outweighs the cost, will it be cheaper and will it, the benefits be better? We need to balance it. That is never free. We need to pay for it. So the six projects funded under ODA by China are the Mindanao Railway Project, Tagum Davao Digos segment, Closed Circuit Television Project in the cities of Barikina, Paranaque, Pasig, San Juan, and Valenzuela, New Centennial Water Source, Kaliwa Dam Project, Philippine National Railway South Long Haul Project, or the PNR Bicol, Samal Island Davao City Connector Project, and the Chico River Pump Irrigation Project. Ayon kay Gajalian, we, we should study the ODA based on the economy, interest rates, and grace period. These are the important aspects. Geopolitics, that's just the third. Are there great are there greater benefits when it comes to economic activities? Now, I sa Department of Finance earlier, nag-inform sila kay Chinese Ambassador Huang Xilian. Ayan, dun pa siya. Now, yung Philippines request for ADA from Japan, uh, from sorry, from China for 83 billion dun sa Mineral Railway Phase 1 1 was being pulled out. So, wala. It's over. Wala. Purong scam. <laughs> now, I, I know, of course, uh, mahabang usapan yan. We can have a different vlog about this, mga kameta. Of course, on the on the side of China, sasabihin nila, ang problema po ay hindi galing sa kanila, ang problema po ay galing sa Pilipinas. Ang sinasabi po nila, you know, yung Philippines laws and regulations, yung right of way, sobrang komplikado. Yung... Uh, Right of expropriation ay delikado. Tsaka, yung isa sa tama sinasabi ng mga ibang Chinese dyan ay napakakurakot yung mga counterparts nila sa Pilipinas. So, ito po yung project. Tapos, migla, biglang iba na yung nagiging itsura ng project dahil daming gusto mga uh, kung ano ng kalokohan. Especially nangyari to dati, di ba? So, okay, I kind of see the argument of our, our pro-China friends or Chinese friends who are saying that actually ang problema sa Pilipinas side. But let's be also honest, hindi lang sa Pilipinas nangyari and all around the road nakikita natin na China makes billions of dollars of promises and really not much happens. Or when it happens, it's Chinese workers, Chinese technology, Chinese engineering, Chinese infrastructure, Chinese Chinese logistics. Wala. Alos walang participation local country tas ang taas pa yung interest rates as we saw in Sri Lanka, as we saw in many, many countries. Also in Laos. Yung Laos, mayabang sila kasi may speed railway sila. But there are big questions whether these are white elephant projects, right? Many of the other projects that China built in Africa. Now, having said that, that doesn't mean that necessarily maganda rin yung ginagawa ng ibang bansa. Ang tanong ko ngayon is nasaan ang US? Nasaan ang US? Nasaan yung mga infrastructure projects naman ng US sa Pilipinas? Japan, okay, that's good. Pero, hindi pwede na sasabihin ng, ng US na ibabash lang nila yung China, pero wala silang replacement. So the question right now is, what is the US and our Western partners gonna offer us now that essentially all of these tatay era uh, uh, belt and road projects ay wala nang saisai dahil wala naman talaga saisai to begin with but it, that shouldn't make us uh, give easy pass to the other side because oh ano naman i-offer ng US sa atin now so far in fairness pagdating naman dito sa West Philippines issue President Biden just the other day made it absolutely clear that uh, that the Philippines US 1951 Mutual Defense Treaty will apply should there be an attack on our troops, personnel, etc., and that the U.S. and Philippines will jointly quote, defend themselves against external arm attack, right? So President Biden in a press conference said the other day, the United States Defense Secretary of the Philippines is ironclad 
any attack on the Philippine aircraft vessels or armed forces will invoke our mutual defense treaty with the Philippines. All right? So we will jointly defend ourselves against any external attack. Yun ang sinabi ni President Biden. No? So in short, tutulungan tayo pag if ever nagkaroon na escalation sa West Philippine Sea. Now, nagkaroon tayo ng mahabang discussion like how is the U.S. going to be involved in three potential conflicts simultaneously, Ukraine, Israel conflict right now in Gaza, and also the West Philippine Sea. I have my doubts about it. I have raised some issues about it. But let's see. But so far, mga kameta, on the South China Sea, it looks like there's more reassurance from the U.S. But my tanong is this. Okay, na-expose na na medyo scammy na pledge trap lang yung mga investment pledges ng China. Wala po nangyari, nakakancel lahat, walang funding, etc. And yung kalabuan na yan nangyari, and by the way, before Marcos made a decision on EDCA, which is in February of this year. August pa lang last year, alam natin, wala nangyari sa mga projects na yan. So, this problem of China making pledges, empty pledges, precedes the EDCA decision by BBM. So, hindi natin pwede blame yan. But it's not, as I always say, ano naman i-offer ng US sa Pilipinas when it comes to economic incentives and investments. Hindi pwede purong ETCA lang, purong mga weapons, military. Dapat may economic infrastructure investment ng ang Amerika, mga Europeo, yung mga ibang bansa. Hindi lang pwede mga Hapon lang forever. Kasi limitado din ang kakaya ng mga Hapon eh. But we'll discuss more about mga Hapon this week. There'll be developments, don't worry. I know what I'm talking about. We'll talk about more Japan this week. You'll know why soon. But going back to this mga kameta, ito talaga, ito talaga, na-expose talaga, pang barangay lang talaga yung foreign policy, tatay di yung purong palpak, purong palpak, ang dami na billion-billion na sinabi na walang dumating, cancelled na lahat, walang nangyari. Ilan years na, 2016 pa lang pumunta na sa China, 2023, mag-2024 na, wala pa rin nangyari. Alright, on that note, thank you very much mga kameta, and talk to you soon, hinahanap na ako dun sa kabila. Alright, kailangan natin ma-interview. And nah. All right. Talk to you soon. God bless.